Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. We are currently in the process of building a gallery dap that's going to end up looking like this. This is indeed part two to this series and we have left off here where we managed to get the wallet from Metamask. This is exactly where we left off the last time and even with the code. So if you do not know what's busy happening, go and watch the first part of this series in the playlist. We are busy building this dApp and it's to help you get used to becoming a Web3 developer. So let's carry on. In the previous video, we have implemented the init connection function. Now the problem is if we go to our dApp and we refresh, we will need to click on connect again to make sure that we get the wallet address from MetaMask. We don't want this functionality and instead if I've connected before and I come to this page that we get the address without me clicking on connect. How do we do that? Well, we can make use of React's built-in functionality where it refreshes whenever there's a state update. One of the hooks that we can use is the use effect hook. So let's go and import it here at the top. Use effect. Next, what we're going to do here just before the render function is we are going to make use of this use effect, put a anonymous function. And in this anonymous function, what we are going to do is we're going to call the init connection function up here. We need to end this with empty brackets because there's no dependencies. And by doing this, if we go back to our DAP and we refresh, you can see that our wallet is being picked up. Because as this function or this actual component renders, it calls the use effect hook once. So the next thing we want to do is actually sort out our header component and how it renders. Currently, we're only returning a div. But let's go and add some CSS styles to create a page and a header component or at least some header styling. The first thing that we're going to do is go to the app.css file and let's go define a page style. So let's define a class and basically a class is a style that can be applied to more than one element. And in this class, which is dot page, this is how you define a class. We're going to specify a height of a hundred vertical height. Then a width is going to be a hundred percent. And we want to make the display flex. And for the flex direction, we can leave it at column. That is our page style. So now back in the app.js file, in the main div, let's go and give it a class name of page. We can save that so long and nothing probably changed apart from we have this big connect button because it's stretching the full width of our page. One thing that I love doing, especially when it comes to styles, is I like to go back into my file and on a style that I want to see where it's being affected, give it a background color of any kind of sort. I'm going to make this aquamarine. So now that I have this style saved, if I go back, I can clearly see the affected boundaries of what the style is doing. I use this approach, especially when it comes to layouts. The aquamarine might be a bit heavy on the eyes, so I'm going to make it a darker aquamarine, save it, go back, and then at least I can see my text. But this way we can block out the layout and be sure that we get the results that we are coding for. Okay, but this heading does not look sexy enough. And what we actually want is something like this, where there's a logo, some text, and then the address replaced by the button if you are not connected. So let's go and implement that. First things first is let's go to the code and let's go and define the structure. So basically in here, what we would like to have is a div that's going to define our header. And in here, we most probably want to put these things inside. Then we're probably going to need an image. So let's define an image tag as well as a paragraph tag. So here we just for time being can put some text 
then we probably need to define an image for the logo. So inside of the source directory, let's create a new folder and call it assets. And inside there, I'm going to create a new folder, call it images, like so. Now let's drag a logo image in here. So I've added my two images, basically the logo that we are going to use, as well as an OpenSea logo that we are going to use on a later stage. So I've just gone ahead and added that as well. So now what we need to do is add it to the source attribute and we're going to specify it like so. We're going to say that this needs to require an image from assets, images and our logo. So now when we save this, let's go and check out the results. Wow, such a big logo. This obviously needs some styles. Jumping back to the code, let's give it some styles. Let's firstly give this image a class uh, name. And we can basically call this the art icon. That will be fine. And let's give this uh, button a class as well. So let's give this class name. And this could just be, I don't know, button. And for the top div over here, we're going to make this uh, the header, right? So this is the div that's wrapping these elements. So ideally, we would not like to see the button connect if we are connected already. So let's go ahead and hide the button. Put a curly bracket and now we're going to give it an if condition and we're going to say if the account is equal to empty, so to speak, or an empty string with a question mark, then we're going to render this button element. After the button, we're going to give it colon and then end this with another curly bracket. If I save now, I am going to get some reformatting. But essentially what happens is we are saying if the account is empty, show the connect button. Otherwise, show the account information. This is known as a ternary operator. And you can see that because of the question mark and this colon. This is something you can read up more and I will explain in future tutorials. But just understand, it gives us an if else kind of statement. All right, time to go ahead and style the header the art icon and the button. So going back here to the app.css, we can create a header style. We can also create a button. And then lastly, the art icon style. And before we carry on, we need to remember our dots because these are classes. For the header styles, we're going to start off by providing a minimum height of 45 pixels. This is so we make sure that this is indeed going to at least be 45 pixels. We're going to use this display as flex because we want to spread out the children, the children elements in kind of a row. Now by default, flex does display row, so we don't need to set it at all. But we are going to align the items uh, in center and then we're going to justify the content as space between. Both align items and justify content has to do with the spacing between the children and how this flex box space them. We are going to also add some uh, padding and we're going to give it a 5 pixel padding, also 20, uh, 20 pixels right on the sides. And then for the font, uh, let's make the font size about 16, 16 pixels, just to make it a bit bigger. Now, if we save this and go back, the image is still going to be big. So let's go ahead and quickly add some sizes for the image. I'm going to end up with a width of about 20 uh, pixels for our image. And we can still specify the height as 20 as well, because this is a square formatted uh, image, right? Uh, we're going to give it a margin of 5 pixels just to make sure we also add that bit of a margin. Let's save this and go and check the results. Here we go. We can see our address, the text, as well as our logo over here on the left hand side. Now, this is perfect. The address is a bit big, but we're going to solve that in a second. And uh, yeah, it looks fantastic. 
although we can't see where the header is really and like I said before I like adding at least background colors to everything so I know where they are. So for this let's add this light aquamarine well actually last time we couldn't see it so let's add this uh, purple. Save it, go back and now we can see this is where our header is actually positioned at. So for development purposes, coloring the backgrounds of elements is absolutely fantastic. This is my preferred method of doing things in CSS. Okay, so let's go and check out the button. In order to see the button pop up, let's disconnect from this website and let's refresh. Let's actually cancel and do not connect. And the thing is, we can't really see our button. Let's go and apply some styles. Here where the button is, what we're going to do is firstly, let's make the border uh, none. Because usually with a default button, the borders are there and it looks ugly. So we're not going to have that. For the border radius, we can make it 50 pixels. We can also give it a padding and maybe three pixels on the sides and then uh, on the top and the bottom and then nine pixels on the sides. And then for the font size, this could be 16 as well, but we can leave that there because it's inside the um, header. The cursor is going to be pointer. And that's about it. We can give it a background color. Uh, let's give it a, maybe like a light gray, uh, light gray background color. So let's save this, go back, and we can still see it's missing. That means there's something wrong in our code. So let's go back here and see why. So looking at the code, we can see we are comparing this, uh, to, you know, to be equal to an empty string. Now, technically, you can put a stricter, you know, check there. I'm just going to turn my initial, kind of the initial value uh, of this set account to an empty string. All right. So if we go back here, we can now see that if I refresh, yes, it wants us to log in. Uh, we can see the connect button. If we click on connect and we say connect, we should then see the wallet address. And if we refresh, we should keep on seeing the wallet address and not the connect button, unless we do go and disconnect from our DAP. So if we go ahead and disconnect and we do refresh, that's when we'll see the pop-up as well as the button to remind us that we can connect. I want to show you that we don't necessarily want to see this big address. Let's shorten it. So in the code itself, here where we show the account, what we can do is just before the brackets, we can put like three dots, three ellipses, and then what we're going to do is in the account section, we're going to say substring this. So we're going to say we only want a small portion of this account, right? And what we need to provide it is the account uh, dot length, which means it gives us the length of the string. And then we're going to minus seven. This should result in ellipses with the address. And that's way shorter. A person will still identify this as their wallet address, but yet we don't have this big address poking out, pushing the rest of the elements to the side. Our header is looking great, but we're still missing a piece. If we look at the example, we can see that there's this icon. Now, this icon is not an image. It's actually an icon that I got from the React icon library. How do we add that? Well, firstly, Copy this line over here and let's go to the code. In the code in the terminal, I'm going to press command C to cancel this operation. I'm then going to paste this command npm install uh, react icons and save it. So after this has installed, we should have access to the icons. Now we can run the program again. So we can say npm run start hit enter and it should spin up our dev server again. So now we have the library installed. Taking a look at how this works is basically you import an icon and then you simply just use it. 
So in our example, we are going to import an icon that we want from a library. And the library that I'm going to be using is the game icons. So if I click there, we can see that we can automatically go ahead and copy this import and then replace it with whatever icon name we want to include. So back in the code, right here at the top, let's paste this import. So for example, let's say we want to use this icon. This is a cool lightning bolt icon. I want to use this instead. So I go and replace this name and you can import multiple icons if you want to. Then down here where I see my P tag, I'm going to add a span. A span is just an element that you can use inside of a text element. And in here, I'm going to define this element itself. So if I do this, save, go back to our app, you can see the icon is already there. Let's give it a bit of spacing on the left hand side. So what we can do is go into the element itself and basically add an inline style specifying the margin left of about five pixels. I also notice while going back, there's our beautiful spacing that our logo is a bit small. So in the CSS, where we have to find the art icon, I'm going to up this to be about 30 pixels with maybe, well, we don't need to give it a margin now because it does center it automatically. And that looks way better. Like I mentioned before, we are going to make this value dynamic, but for now, the styling is complete. We are going to go ahead and remove this background color here, as well as this one that we've added before. That was only for testing purposes. So this is our final result and it looks beautiful. I want to take a second to ask if you have enjoyed my content to this point, please leave me a big thumbs up, comment below what has been your favorite part in this series, as well as subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. This brings us to the end of part two on our journey to build this gallery DAP. In the next part, part three, we will be looking at connecting to a smart contract and reading some data from it. That's going to be very exciting, so stay tuned for that, and the video should be out shortly. I hope you have a fantastic day. Until next time, cheers for now.